Uh, so maybe we'll, we'll let everybody know we're a little scraggly today. It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's Superhero Slate. Hello everyone and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TVs, <laughs> movies, and superheroes, and also t- television and TVs, uh, so, uh, so let's talk about it. We're going to talk about My name is Chris Dillard. <laughs> My name is Mike Royer. And uh, this is what happens when we don't practice for a week we've been, here now. We've been, we've been flustered. Uh, yeah. we, we've been doing everything we can to play Spider-Man, but things keep getting in our way. That's right. Uh, for this week, uh, Captain Marvel finally lands with some photos, Mike. Yeah, and guess what? It didn't break the internet, but I'll complain about that here in a couple you, minutes. I'm going to complain about something. Uh, we've been exploring New York as Spider-Man, as uh, Mike pointed out. Oh, yeah. It's a big old city. Uh, Swamp Thing is going to have a real suit, which Ooh, is good news and cool. more. I didn't know that. Like You just dropped that on me right now. Yeah. Oh, man. So I've been waiting for today for a while because, you know, usually when, like, a brand new Marvel or superhero movie comes out, we go, like, radio silence and we like to talk about it, you know, firsthand on the radio, uh, on the microphone so everybody can hear us. Mm. Uh, I feel like it's kind of been the same with Spider-Man a little bit. It's a, it's a huge release. I think this game has been in development till I want to say at least 2015. I, like I, I kind of watched some like retrospectives of all the Spider-Man games over the last couple weeks because I, you know, my hype was ensuing, and I, I swear Every, I'll, everyone was putting one of those out, so they, yeah, those were everywhere. Yeah, I, I want to say Insomniac like got the license like back in 2015. So, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that game here in a minute. Uh, but I wanted to. Uh, sound off this hilarious kind of YouTube series. This is like the only like web web series YouTube series I've ever like thought was like worth its salt is uh it's called Anime Crimes Division. So it's uh made with a uh Freddie W who has Rocket Jump Studios. He he did like Video Game High School that was like a web series and then like Netflix like bought it and put it on there. I know a lot of people like that. But I like him for all of his like YouTube shorts he's did in the past. And it was co-sponsored with Crunchyroll, and it's just this ridiculous, like, small story of, like, 15-minute episodes, maybe four or six episodes in the first season, about just, like, this city, uh, like, it's I think it's called New Otaku City, that just, like, loves anime, it infects, like, every aspect of life in this city, and there's, like, this whole crimes division for crimes ju- that just uh, deal around just, like, anime, like, somebody, like, breaking your, like, Gundam statue, or somebody, like, or two gangs arguing in a park about subs versus dubs, and it's just ridiculous and hilarious, and I'm not even really a giant anime fan, I know, like, just enough to kind of get most of the references so Mm -hmm. anyway season two dropped uh the first episode dropped on friday they'll be coming out um every friday for the next eight weeks and it's just hilarious i mean it's free you can just watch it on youtube you don't need to like subscribe to crunchyroll or anything to watch it but it's just so funny uh they do like a really amazing job like making all of these kind of like real life actors kind of like mimic what you'd see like in an anime and yeah the the writing's just great which is usually where most like youtube series fall short you'll get these people that have really nice cameras like a really nice eye for mm-hmm. cinematography and but they just don't have the means to like hire good actors or like they don't care about taking the time to write like an interesting script they they're just usually ripping off stuff that they've seen on movies or TV already so this is like the first thing in a while that's actually kind of felt like it's like you know organic and like creative and actually has like a a hilarious point of view so go watch anime crimes division um just it's on youtube i think you just search anime crimes division you can watch all of season one watch the first episode of season two that came out on friday so that's that that's what i'm sounding out that's what that's what i'm digging this week besides spider-man <laughs> that that's your that's what you're you're saying people should go watch is mm-hmm. is that one yeah. well uh I have to give a shout out to a listener of the show, Jason Ambrositis, and uh, his brother in law, uh, Troy, uh, for inviting me to Lexington Swap Timber yesterday. Ooh, Swap Timber. Uh, it's that essentially sounds... a, a Comic Con without the celebrities. If oh, you okay. Uh, comic books, uh, artists, a uh, lot, of, lot of comic books mostly. Um, they, they invited me a couple weeks ago, and we went down yesterday morning and spent most of the day there. It was rainy here. And um, I was able to pick up some uh, Sentry issues in the trade. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that I already have the trade, but I'm getting it for, for a friend of the show, Brian Smith. And I was able to pick up an Avengers trade, and then I picked up some other stuff for my wife. So it was really cool. And uh, 
Jason uh, Jason has statues and like figures, like like the big uh-huh. Hot Toys collectibles, and uh, we've been looking for books to put behind his. Uh, Comics. Oh, I like that. You know, interior nerd decoration. I like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we were able to go through uh, and find some iconic issues for some of it, including Nick Fury, uh, a Star Lord one. Uh, I believe we got a Drax, maybe not a Gamora, but at least a Drax cover and some other ones. So, um, to go with the statues, so that was really cool. And and I think you know we just we just had a good time down there without all the. It wasn't crowded. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you had elbow room to walk around. You could look at the books without being in somebody's way. Uh, it was just nice to have that breathing room and, and not the pressure of what that place usually is in, in March. So wow. um, gotta give a shout to them for letting me ride along with them and talking stuff over and, and, and giving me hell about the show. So, yeah. uh, well, y- you were speaking of figures there and, and for the life of me, I can't believe I almost forgot to mention this, but, um, I, I won't reveal how how I was able to do this because you know I I like to keep our our journalistic sources uh, <laughs> protected just in case. But I had a chance to visit the post production and writing offices for CW's The Flash and uh, Legends of Tomorrow uh, this weekend, and it was it was really crazy. It was really cool. Uh, it's like just as nerdy as an office as like you think it was going to be. It was later uh-huh. in the evening, so you know it wasn't uh, as hustling and bustling as I'm sure it was during the day. But like you know, I got to walk through like their little kitchen area, and there's just like a a whole like table just like full of like comic books. Apparently, they're just getting comic books. There's like all the time. They're they're, they're just there to grab and pick. So I'm guessing just like every single like brand new issue lands on that table. I went into like I got to meet like everybody in their little offices, and <laughs> every single person has like fun. Co pops in their oh, office. Yeah. Like you walk in, and everybody has like a bookshelf with just like a whole bunch of like nerdy uh, merch on there. I'm just like, oh man, I need an office to where I can do this. And the reason why you, I, I, I bring this up since you're talking about toys, I went in, I went into the 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 grand Taj Mahal of of merch and sideshow collectibles, where one of the employees, I believe this was on the writing staff, I I couldn't even imagine how many uh statues uh this man had in his one office it was really? it was ludicrous it was amazing it was like i was walking through the sideshow hot toys collectible booth at comic-con but all in this crammed in this one office like he, he he had so many like the top shelf he couldn't even stand his figures up anymore so they're just all like laying on each other he had a gigantic infinity gauntlet that you could put on and move your fingers around and then the gauntlet would move you're probably you've probably seen it uh before because i'm sure there's lots of uh, gauntlet merch out there but it looked like the one from the movie it was sitting on top of a captain america shield um, he, he even had like the 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 deep cut like samurai uh, Star Wars figurines on his desk. It was just like I, I could have just stood in there like all day, just like pointing out. I know what that's from. I know what that's from. I know what that's from. I saw that at Comic Con. I saw that at Comic Con. That thing's like three hundred dollars over there, and you just have it sitting on the shelf, and you probably don't even look at it at all. So it was really cool uh, knowing that the people making these super nerdy shows are made by a bunch of uh nerds also so i also got i I got to glimpse into the arrow offices i didn't get to walk into there but they had like this cool neon arrow sign there so um and that's this is just all like post-production riding offices i can't imagine what it's like actually where they shoot you know up in vancouver where you know they're probably not as excited (laughs) yeah Yeah, but i i yeah i just wanted to want to say that's that's pretty cool so um I know a lot of the times with these CW superhero shows, sometimes we and other people out there can get a little cynical if you're a big fan of them. But it, it, from at least what I've seen, I actually got to see some people like behind monitors like editing the show. Everybody seems to really be uh, into what they're doing. So, um, yeah, I just thought that was really cool and I wanted to give that a shout out. So, uh, But i got to protect my source, so I can't tell you how I got there. What, what's your, what, what, what secrets did you uncover while you were there? Well, we walked into one room. I don't think this was like a secret at all, but they're like, even they were getting kind of confused on what seasons of Legends of Tomorrow they were on because that started like, I think a year after the Flash. They're like, wait, wait, no, we have to subtract a season, but then we have to like, and then they're like, oh, the crossover is always on episode like eight, but then it's uh, so they were there, like, there's just so many shows over there. They they even like are having like these debates on trying to figure out what happens when and how these shows line up. So. It was pretty funny that even even over there, they're just like, yeah, there's so many episodes and so many superheroes, even we can't even keep track of it all the time. Wow. Well, that's, that sounds like quite quite the adventure, Mike. Yeah. So, uh, an adventure in and of itself. So, uh, 
uh, while you were doing that, I have to say I've been twitching, streaming my <laughs> Spider-Man playthrough, Mike. And uh, I just got to give a shout out to those people who were watching me play this weekend because all I wanted to do was play this weekend. You, mm-hmm. I, I didn't say this on the last show. I was actually able to get a Spider-Man branded PS4 Pro. I was able to upgrade my system. Yeah, this was like a sneak attack from you. Yeah. Because it was early in the week. I see online that you put your PlayStation up for sale. And I was like, wait a minute. No, we're playing Spider-Man this weekend. He can't be selling his PlayStation. <laughs> And then you, and then like a couple hours later, you're like, yeah, I'm thinking about getting that uh, collector's edition PS4 Pro, because I think we watched the same video where they're kind of showing the differences between it, the Pro PS4 and and the regular one. And I guess you drank the Kool Aid. I, I did, I, I did. It was the Digital Foundry <laughs> video, of course. That yeah. They showed it back and forth. But at the same time, have you seen that thing? It oh, is absolutely yeah, it's, beautiful. <laughs> it's like it's a it's like not matte finish. It's like slick, right? Yeah, yeah. The white spider is, is matte on it, mm-hmm. so like it's slick around it, except for the white spider. And uh, you can't really buy a pro right now unless you go up over five hundred dollars. So to get uh, a pro for four hundred and the game with it, I mean, it was there was no there was no doubt there really in my mind. Yeah, if I was yeah, going to upgrade, this was it. Yeah, that was a good deal. I think you, uh, yeah, because you were able to buy this on Thursday, so you could technically play this before everybody else, right? Yeah, well, um, they wouldn't give it to me until 9 o'clock when everybody else got theirs at 9 o'clock mm-hmm. on Thursday. But um, So you had to pre-order these things. The pre-orders have been sold out for, for weeks, and I did not know this system was a pro until mm-hmm. I, we started watching this. And I, I looked on the GameStop app. I went to my GameStop I hate going to GameStop, by the way. <laughs> um, the guy was like, I'm not buying mine because I got one for free through the store. So, But another guy just asked about it. And I called the day before. And they're like, no, we don't have any extras. So mm-hmm. I was already irritated by this. He's like, well, if he doesn't come in and buy it at 9, by 9.30, you can have it. Oh, cool. Great. I didn't go to that store. I went to. The, I got on the app earlier that day uh, beforehand. Uh-huh. The one in the mall got two extras, and no one had got online to check yet. Whoa! So nice. I went to the mall after work and waited to be first in line. I was the first <laughs> person to do all this stuff. I love that. I love that. Like, because I did it the total opposite way of I just you know used my normal PlayStation. I just downloaded it digitally, which I didn't know gives me the game tax free. So I actually bought the game for fifty nine ninety nine with like no taxes involved and especially in California if you do online shopping you get sales tax applied to that no matter what so I like that how I did mine with like a totally digital interface and you're like at the mall in line yeah. <laughs> like that's cool like because it, you actually had to put effort into it I did I did I had to put a lot of effort into it, and I didn't think I was going to get I, I resigned myself to not getting one Mike uh-huh. um, but I did and I was still able to get it with all the pre-order bonuses and all that fun stuff and, and have that set up to play a little bit that night so um, but I have played several times since then. I played, I think, an hour on Saturday and an hour and a half, two hours a day on, on Twitch. So mm-hmm. I, there were people talking, interacting. I know Super Fan Jim, a uh, fan of the show, Jacob Henshaw, they were both interacting with me in the chat channels while I was playing. So uh, that was really cool to, to hear them talk about like how everyone has different play styles in this game, Mike, and, and oh, how fun it is. Yeah, that was uh, that's the craziest thing about this game is Spider-Man can do so many different things. Like, this this reminds me of the time when I used to look at video games back in, like, the N64 kind of PlayStation 2 era, and I would go, like, to, I think it was GameSpot.com, and when they would uh, review a game, they would kind of put a learning curve index next to it to kind of show you how difficult it was. And I would say this, this game doesn't necessarily have, like, a steep learning curve, but there is a lot that you kind of have mm. to familiarize familiarize yourself with like i love how you like right off the bat start web slinging like that's like literally the first thing you <laughs> do because it's the best thing in the game it's so good it's exactly what i wanted like it totally reminds me of what it was like swinging around and like spider-man 2 uh, yeah. back in the day so i i love that that is just they got it pitch perfect and like I, right there i was just like all right this is all like i could just swing around New York City for sixty dollars. Like I don't need any more game. So everything else after that was just like a plus, which has been amazing. So so they got the cake right, and everything else is just icing to you, Mike. Oh yeah, you you're just eating that icing up. <laughs> um, I I feel I am still you know I've put some time into this game, Mike, mm-hmm. and I still feel I have not 
even opened up halfway through the story yet. Oh um, yeah, like so, the, the story is interesting, but I keep getting distracted by like finding backpacks and yeah. taking pictures of uh, landmarks, and like I'll be on my way to like okay, I'm finally gonna go to the 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 main story checkpoint, and on my way there, like oh, there's a car chase. Hold on, gotta go stop this car chase. Oh wait, there's a backpack over there. Oh man, somebody's getting mugged. I'm like, what am what am I doing? It's been an hour. Where was I going? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so. Uh, I, I think I mean to to, to say say like the, not to ruin anything, but like you'll notice this in, on the menu. There are things called um, backpack tokens, landscape tokens, crime tokens, and you use these to buy suits and upgrades. Oh, right? So many upgrades. There's tech you can upgrade. <laughs> you can upgrade the suit. You can upgrade your moves. Yeah. And then like the 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 new suits come with different moves, but the moves aren't necessarily tied to the suit, right? Yeah. I think yeah, you can use correct. the moves. Yeah. So oh man, it's crazy. And if you pre-ordered the game, you got like the Infinity War suit. And have you put those robotic spider arms on? Those I'm things not, are cr- those I'm things are crazy. No, when, uh, you'll put those bad boys on, and the first time you activate them and start using them, you're just gonna be like, whoa! Like I almost felt like I was cheating. Like I I turned them off. I was like, no, the game. This this seems like I'm cheating. They're too awesome. Yeah, until you die several times, you're like, I could probably <laughs> use a different ability. Oh my god! Speaking of that, <laughs> I have died a lot. I am. I'm no good at dodging, and before you even ask, yes, I do have perfect dodge. I've been trying to yeah. upgrade the things that I'm not good at to make them easier. So, I think it's so, just because I'm always I'm too gun ho. Like I see a group of twenty guys and I just jump right in the middle of them, and then like I was like, this was a bad idea. I gotta dodge my way out of this <laughs> circle, and I gotta work my way back in. I'm not stealth at all in this game. I'm I, just throwing punches wherever I can. I I I've, been, I've really enjoyed. The, if you go watch my my Twitch streams are recorded, you can actually see like I, I tried stealthy moves, but I died a couple times, and people mm-hmm. were watching me. So I know it, the game's not too easy but it's also not like super like i'm not frustrated when i die i'm like yeah all right i'm gonna approach this differently the next time and see what how that works as far as i know there's not a whole lot of um uh, negatives to dying like if you're in a mission you do get kind of pushed back to kind of like the last checkpoint or like the last wave of people you're fighting but if you die during like a normal crime mission um you just kind of get sit, sent back to just like a nearby roof i believe or a nearby perch yeah. and then that that crime event has just like disappeared so you yep. don't get to play it again and i don't believe like you lose any experience or lose any no. money or anything like that yeah well there's no money in the game um as you probably have learned from the story peter mm-hmm. i mean and we know peter parker is broke as, as all can get all all get out um yeah there's no negative parts i from the there's three trees: innovator, defense, and I believe the last one is uh, travel, traversing. Yeah, defense and traversing are the most two of the import of the the three trees. If I was to say anything, because getting that city is huge, Mike. I, I cannot believe how big New York is in this game. Like it takes you you have to set five minutes aside to go up and down if you're gonna swing from one end of the island to the other. Oh, and it's so gratifying. Have you gotten a a hold of, like, the launching points yet? Have you kind of figured out how to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm pretty... I feel pretty good about moving through the city. Like, that's... Mm -hmm. That's... I I would... Because you can fast travel, too, and it'll do a little cutscene of Spider-Man on the subway on his phone, and you're like, oh, that's... That's a slice of life right there for you. Yeah, I haven't haven't quite unlocked that section yet because I was just walking around the city... um, and I was like, oh, this is cool. It's like a subway. And I walked down there. And it's like, you haven't unlocked fast travel yet. And I was like, okay. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> the things unlock as the stories progress. And there are these things called challenge tokens that ca- that you have to spend them to buy suits later on and, and um, upgrade your items. Mm. I literally have just unlocked those. Like, I feel like I'm not even to the halfway point in this game. I'm still in the tutorial stage. Oh, yeah. I haven't. Un- I, think the la- I think the last thing I unlocked was the landmark tokens of being okay. able to use the camera. So the, and the last big event I played was kind of those wave of thugs on top of the construction tower. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, I'm just in the infancy right now of the story. Oh yeah. But yeah, I'm just I'm loving everything so far. Um, hopefully later down the line we'll reconnect and talk about the story of this game in a couple of weeks. But I mean that's kind of the thing that happens like with video games. Like really, what you're reviewing the first weekend is kind of the controls and the mechanics, and you know just making sure they <laughs> they put the game together correctly. And man, the level of polish on this game is crazy. Like, I know we talked about that Digital Foundry uh, video on YouTube that kind of went over all of, like, the nitty-gritty of, like, the tech and how the game was put together. But, man, just, like, walking around, I was just like, man, that's a squirrel. 
just one <laughs> running across the ground and, I, and then I shot web at it. It doesn't hurt it, but it, the web does stick to the squirrel and the squirrel yeah. will keep going. It's like, oh, he's got web on him. So you can't hurt the little squirrel, which is good. Uh, there was a, a funny little bug that happened, though, because in a giant game like this on launch weekend, there will be a couple bugs. Uh, there was a car chase that I participated in, but the car was stationary. It wasn't moving at all, which I wasn't oh. sure if it was a bug at first because I was like, okay, well, I guess theoretically these dudes could just be in their parked car trying to shoot me on the roof. And then I was like, okay, well, what's going to happen when I get to the end? There's always a quick time event for, like, stopping the car. And I got the quick time event where, like, Spidey puts his, like, you know, feet on the hood and then shoots out the two webs across to the sides of the street. Yeah. And, like, so I thought that was pretty funny. I was like, well, this car has literally no momentum, but, like, I just kicked it in the air and I'm trying to slow it down. So uh, some of those little bugs can be pretty funny. But I think my favorite <laughs> little kind of piece of polish so far has been – Whenever you're stopping like a robbery that's in a building, uh, not on top of a building, like in it, like on the surface. Like in a store? Yeah, the camera will stay fixed. Like you don't have this dynamic camera. And it's almost like you're just watching kind of like a wide shot in like a movie where you just see Spider-Man uh, like on a stationary like tripod just bouncing around inside of the bouncing off walls in this jewelry store like beating up thugs. It's like so cool. It's such just like an interesting like creative choice to be like, oh, let's just lock the camera on these events because it'll just make it so much more like dynamic even though it's not moving. So yeah, there's just so much to this yeah. game. And like I the I feel like the story could honestly be garbage and I wouldn't care because like all I want to do is just get to like the just the craziness of just traversing well, the city. It's great. But let me tell you the story is not garbage and I've I'm I'm enthralled with it right now. Like I'm I'm at a turning point in the game where I'm just like this is great. Like it's starting to pick up steam and um get all the characters involved and it it's really I I'm really enjoying it. So uh, I I I'm looking forward to, to all this opening up. I've I've unlocked several suits. Um fan of the show, uh, Jim, is going to be super mad because he said, when you get Spider-Man 2099, that's like his golden like goose, and I just unlocked the Spider-Man 2099 suit. So, <laughs> um, that's been really fun to do that. And I, I, I like, I, I gotta say, you know, if you're on the fence but you're a Spider-Man fan, you're gonna like the game. Um, oh, yeah. There's no reason not to if, play this game. It's a lot like the Arkham games, but quicker. And I like the oh, speed yeah. of it. So yeah. I played I played the Arkham games a little bit, and yeah, it's a little bit more sluggish in comparison. Kind of a similar kind of beat down tactics, but like just the traversal mechanic is just amazing. Like uh, like playing this, I was just like, man, can Insomniac just make every superhero game? But then I start to think, but I don't know. This might be kind of unique to Spider Man. I mean, you can't just take the same formula and like you know apply it to Iron Man or Captain America. You know, right? I just I think just Spider-Man is just that perfect mixture of weird superhero with really interesting traversal mechanics. Um, the scale another, is just fantastic. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah, like, and it, I was also going to bring up, like, I love the stuff inside of the backpacks. You yeah. know, it's not just, like, one-off things. They're, like, fully rendered, like, 3D models that you can rotate. I, like, found, like, the, you know, the cutscene early on in the game where they talk about the wheat cakes, like yeah. the wheat pancakes? There's a backpack that you find that has the recipe for the wheat cakes in it. And, like, me and a me and Andy were reading through it, and, like, you know, she's a really big baker, and she's like, yeah, that's a real recipe. Like, we could make those. So maybe we'll have to make Spider-Man wheat pancakes. And, like, some of the stuff is kind of, like, really sweet and, like, saccharin. Like, uh, he had, like, a medical bill in there that he couldn't pay. And one of them was like um, a broken eyepiece that he, that yeah. uh, Spidey narrates every time you view one of these, and it says like, "Oh, this is a, an older eyepiece I had with a earlier fight with the vulture, and it broke." And yeah. that was really a wake up to me to create a stronger suit. And um, yeah, and it's been really interesting to see how they're weaving their own story. Like they 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 were they're weaving in Doc Ock in an interesting way I wasn't expecting because uh -huh. um, they kind of show him early on in the game, and I was like, okay, um, am I getting ready for a boss fight right now? And it's just like, no, actually, I'm not. So yeah. I was like, yeah. So there's so I've, many, I've, so many I've, great choices here. I'm also gonna say the trailers are very misleading on this in in true Marvel fashion as well. So um, a lot of the cutscenes. I mean, you saw the Digital Foundry video. Mm -hmm. people in the cutscenes are not in the actual game cutscenes. So, like, mm -hmm. they string you along with the trailers and then put something else differently in the game. So, uh, that's been very interesting. I've got to say, um, I enjoyed, the, like, you're going to find out when you walk around, like, mission events, there are, like, little points you can walk up to and hit triangle and examine things. There's a lot of really cool stuff in the world. So, th there's you don't have to rush through the game either. Like, you can take your time and, and absorb all these in, like Mike was talking about, and, like, really... Yeah. 
know that they put care into Spider-Man's New York. And and this is not related to the MCU. Someone asked me that. Um, this is no. This is not related to that at all. This is totally different. Uh, oh, but it, man, when you suits start. Are in there. When you start swinging around and that score kicks in, that is a very MCU-esque score. It almost feels like they're mixing the score that they kind of take from the Avengers movies Mm -hmm. and kind of combining it with almost Sam Raimi's score for Spider-Man. And it feels almost kind of like this love child because, like, once the game knows that you're, like, really swinging through the city, like, really cranking at it, that, that that music just swells and you feel like a freaking superhero, and it's great. And I knew I was in for, like, a wild, like, amazing ride when um, uh, Spider-Man does all this crazy stuff kind of that you don't control when you're fighting because the game is smart enough to know, like, oh, well, if you're moving from point A to B, don't just move from A to B. Like, make him do a flip or something cool like that. So um, I love it when you... Peter Parkour. (laughs) Yeah. I love it when Spider-Man slides in between an opponent's legs and yeah. ends up behind him. Like, that happens very on early in the game, and it's basically a basic mechanic, fighting mechanic in the game. And I was like, oh, my God, that was so smooth and so cool. And, man, every I can't gush about this game enough. I wish all <laughs> superhero video games had, like, this level of attention on it. Like, I'm not, like, I don't need a sequel to this game in, like, two years. This doesn't have to be, like, a Call of Duty where you crank something out every year. Um, yeah, man, this is just yeah. great. I, I like the, I, all I want to do is play it right now. <laughs> Podcast over. Bye guys. Yeah, right. Go play. It, pretty much. Uh, that's, that's what I'm, I'm feeling. I'm, I'm thinking about, man, what, what was I doing back up in Spider-Man? What can I, yeah. what can I, can I go do? So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to probably do another couple Twitch streams this week. I try not to do story stuff while on Twitch. Um, but I think I'm going to hit that point where I just have to, uh, or I'll just turn it off one of the two because <laughs> I, uh, I want to progress a little bit and, and grow my character. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, it's a resounding uh, yes from us, I think, mm-hmm. uh, on this game. So if, if yeah. you uh, are thinking about it, pick it up. I, I don't regret paying full price for this game or even buying a brand new console to play it yeah. on. So. And if you're if you're looking for any of us on PSN, I'm Fresh Grill Marks. But uh, just a caveat, I'm still new to the console in general, so sometimes I'll get like friend requests and I'll accept them, but I don't really know where they go and I don't really know how to check on what people's doing. And I don't think there's really any like online multiplayer component to this game, at least as of right now that I know of. So, um, oh, that would be cool cool if they could unlock that like we could swing around in the city together like in different spidey suits that well would be rad. what if what if into the spider verse brings that out they're like here's an uh, into the spider verse are you, you segueing right now are you i wasn't Chris? gonna actually but i was thinking wouldn't that be a cool thing like when that game comes out like okay here's your next dlc it's multiplayer with somebody else in the oh, city that would be that would be sick that would be so cool well i think the next three dlcs are planned through December, so technically yep. they could have something maybe coming out January, or they could wait until the the movie comes out digitally, and then they could kind of pair it with like a digital download for the Spider Man yeah. game. I mean, I expect some of the costume DLC to be from that movie as well. So mm. that would be yeah. that would be really cool. So, um, but yeah, we're gonna switch up from Spider Man the game from to Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Uh, there was a sneak peek trailer about a minute. The first minute of this link here uh, came out. It shows a lot of footage. Has the voice actors of Spider-Man, uh, both Peter Parker and Miles Morales, and I. I just love looking at this. Uh, we've talked about how beautiful this movie is and will be, and this extra footage does not hurt that at all. Like I just love watching it. Yeah, um, I don't think uh, really we got a whole lot of new here, but I think we did get a new voice track for... I had this theory a while ago from one of the other trailers where uh, obviously we know um, that there's a Spider-Man that's going to be mentoring Miles Morales, but also there's another classic version of Spider-Man that it looks like Miles might come across in the movie first, and I believe in this new clip we get to hear him for a brief second and it's like a different voicing Spider-Man. So I think the, the the normal Peter Parker in Miles's universe might die, maybe by the hands of the Green Goblin, or maybe he might, to make it more PG, maybe he gets jettisoned into another universe or something. No, he, you know, in, in the Ultimate Universe, well, it's just that he does die. So it, well, it is, yeah, but who knows if they end up going that direction. They seem to be doing something totally unique here at with least with a gravestone uh, that says peter character. parker yeah yeah so uh we'll have to see but yeah the i've already pre-ordered the art book for this movie there will be an art book for it i saw it on amazon and it looks uh it looks beautiful like the art style in this movie looks uh phenomenal mm. 
Well, I, I think uh, th- there is a lot of new footage in this uh, that we haven't seen before um, in that first minute. But, like, the New York Comic Con panel is coming October 6th. I, I forgot New York Comic Con is literally next month, like, <laughs> a little less than a month away. So I expect to get a lot more, maybe seeing some of the others. I don't think we've seen the Spider-Man Noir official yet out of this, voiced by Nick Cage. Uh, we haven't seen uh, uh, Spider, Spider-Ham, spider not Spider-Pig, Spider-Ham. Uh, or any of the other uh, spider verses, so I, I, I imagine we're going to see a lot of those, like the SPDR that we talked about before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I imagine we'll, we're going to see a lot of those coming up here uh, with the New York Comic Con panel. Um, but but that's it. Uh, one more Spider Man thing, Mike. Can I can I can I bother you to talk one more Spider Man? Oh, man, I could talk about Spider Man all day. All right. Well, far from home, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow is confirmed to return as Pepper Potts in this movie, mm. uh, adding to another another returning character because we have Maria Hill and Nick Fury already coming back. Yeah. Uh, so um, we don't know if Robert Downey Jr. will be in it or not, but at least you know she will be. Yeah. So I was gonna say begs the question if we'll see Iron Man. I mean, we got to see him in the in the his first movie, so I don't think uh, uh, Iron Man needs to be showing up and palling around every time, but. Uh, Gwyneth seems to have had minimal roles in these movies, uh, except for Iron Man three. So, mm-hmm. who knows? Yeah, I, I'd say maybe Iron Man two. She had a little bit of a better one as well. Yeah, uh, well, I guess yeah, in her own in the Iron Man movies, but yeah. in, in ancillary projects, she's always just been like a scene here, a scene there. Right. Yeah, and, and not even in she wasn't even in uh, Civil War. Was she? not so. Um, I don't think so, Civil no. War. She broke up. I can't remember if Age of Ultron or not, but either way. Um, Speaking of the MCU, uh, this year alone, 2018, they're closing in on $4 billion with just three movies. That's all it takes, three movies to get $4 billion this year. Uh, Of course, we have Black Panther uh, taking home the domestic record this year. Avengers Infinity War taking over $2 billion in and of itself, and then Ant-Man and the Wasp getting its uh, global release the past couple weeks. Yeah. Quest- uh, question I have for you. Yeah. So um, do you think Marvel's ever going to tip to the point where they're putting out four movies a year? I, I only bring this up because if you start to look at next year, uh, we have all of our movies kind of in the first half of 2019. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to get Captain Marvel. We're going to get a uh, uh, part two for Infinity War. And then Spider-Man is July, correct? That is maybe, correct. Maybe June. Uh, uh, so, yeah, July. that's all going to be in the first half of the year. So is I was starting to think, well, is Disney's game plan to put the superhero movies first half of the year and then kind of like the rebooted animated movies like for the latter part of the year? And maybe like DC will kind of put their projects over there, too. So maybe they don't have to worry about tangoing with them, even though. Obviously, it's not a fair fight with those two franchises right now. So, I don't know. It makes me think, like, are they trying to leave, like, you know, maybe November open for a possible fourth Marvel movie? Well, um, no. Uh, if you look at the other, um, they, they, they seem to be alternating. If you look at our upcoming release page on Superhero Slate, it does show Marvel has November marked for 2020 and 2021. Uh-huh. Um, so, they go from February to November uh, each each of those, you know, I guess May and t- to November in 2020, February to, to November, but I I think three is fine. I don't think they'll go to four. I think Glover stretch it. But the only way I can see this changing is with the Fox, you know, uh, grapple the the X Men Fantastic Four yeah, stuff. That's, that's that, true. They may need to do four, but I don't see them ever wanting to do because I remember two used to be great, and then we got three, and now I'm like awesome <laughs> and and just like we i was talking uh with with uh, jason and uh, troy yesterday we we just have a long wait um but marvel although we have marvel studios marvel is not not putting things out you know um yeah. they've got their other tv shows on, on on broadcast cable networks they have their netflix and hulu shows they're always putting something out there um even though we wish it was movies, it's sometimes it's 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 they've got other yeah. things they need to do to diversify. Yeah. If we were ever going to get inundated with four MCU movies in a year, I would want at least one of those movies to just kind of be really wacky and experimental. Like, you know, make it like a weird prequel or maybe set it in an alternate universe. I don't know. Uh, I, I think four would kind of be uh, hitting the wall there, so... Yeah, I guess we just have to wait a little bit longer for our uh, for our next Marvel Three, movie. Three's man. been pretty good because they can do two regular and one off the wall. Yeah, pretty maybe much. maybe space them out a little bit. Don't put them all in the first half of the year. Like uh, I'm I'm on a dry spell right now. I need a superhero movie in my life. Yeah, well, thankfully, I mean, we do it. I mean, whether it's good or not, we at least have Venom on our plate coming up here, so we get to see something. Mm. Um, 
before uh, you know uh, Aquaman battles it out with literally every other movie on December twenty first. So yeah. Um, another uh, thing I, I saw this week: um, the Academy Awards have already removed the popular movie category following Backlash uh, for twenty nineteen. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. They uh, yeah they they pulled that pretty quick. Uh, it could, however, return in twenty twenty. Um, they didn't say it was off the table for good. They just said for this next year. Um, so I I don't know. I don't know if that's going to come back. Like a lot of people were yeah. pretty pissed off about it. Yeah, I'm starting to hear from pretty like relatively like conservative, just normal kind of Hollywood movie going critics that aren't really like drinking the Kool Aid to to repeat another phrase in this podcast that they think you know there's a good chance Black Panther could be nominated for Best Picture just because since I think they allow what eight or nine nominees for Best Picture, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, no one no one really thinks it's going to win. But I think winning would be just them getting the nomination. So crossing my fingers for you, Black Panther. Yeah, it's true. I mean, even if it's anything better than costume design, you know, <laughs> yeah, y- y- you're you're coming out ahead. Uh, Avengers 4, I've got some news here because they are going and filming the last scenes, reshoots, and probably fake scenes uh, <laughs> right now, Mike, because they, I mean, I was talking about this yesterday, uh, how much of the Infinity War did we not know going in? Like, pretty much uh, all of it. Yeah. Um, they, 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 there was a lot of talk, a lot of rumors, everything was wrong, so Jeremy Renner's coming back to film some more scenes as Hawkeye, he's got his little uh, faux hawk look going on um, in, in the stuff, so... He's coming back as that, and then possibly some fake scenes. Uh, John Slattery, who played the original Howard Stark, has been on set as well. Um, I'm telling you, I'm still holding to the conspiracy theory that all of those set photos we had from like a while ago mm -hmm. uh, from Avengers 4, I think it was all staged. I think all of those random stones that they have attached to their suits, all like the period dated suits, all these time travel theories, they're they're very, very well maybe time travel in this movie because they hinted at it in Ant-Man and the Wasp. But I like the idea that that whole shoot that was outside in the public for everybody to see with their telephoto lenses, I like to think that was all fake. All fake. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna see. I mean, we we've got. I mean, I don't know how many months left. Uh, October, November, December, and then like five, eight months. Yeah. I mean, well, I don't think I don't think you said this on the podcast. It might have been offline through text messages. But didn't you have the the idea, or at least you communicated with me that some people think that that deleted scene from the Infinity War trailer where the Hulk was running through uh, yeah. Wakanda with the crew, that that actually could happen, and maybe we see that with time travel. Like, maybe they redo the fight of Wakanda. Yeah, so some of the things the are, like, that that we are being essentially trolled with the fake trailers, uh, being that they're using scenes from maybe they shot four Avengers 4 in the Avengers Infinity War uh, uh-huh. trailer, because... That I mean, that's very much like what the the theory of that is. What if everybody came at Thanos rather than just yeah. a, a, one at a time? You know, because that's essentially what happened. Thanos came through the portal. He had them one one on a time. But like, what if a whole army came yeah. on him? I mean, it could him? lend a little bit of credence to the ideas that these movies are only one year apart. I mean, talk about efficiency. Because if you're doing a time travel movie, that means you're sharing a lot of scenes, a lot of actors, a lot of costumes. They could have already shot like a third of Infinity War Part Two just when they were filming the first part. So well, they they, they filmed the whole thing. Yeah, they, exactly. They, li- they literally filmed all of it except for these reshoots and pickups. They're so, doing it. Uh, they're doing it. What uh, Ava- James Cameron Avatar style, where he's just like, "Yeah, I'm just filling them all at once." Yeah, but they're <laughs> actually doing it. So I, I don't well, know. If I'm yeah. Comparing, yeah, I can't can't be James Cameron style if he hasn't done it yet. <laughs> I think they did that with like the Matrix or the Hot Lord of the Rings. How about Lord of the Rings? We'll give them Lord yeah. of the Rings style. So there's that. But I, one thing we've not seen from Avengers four or heard really anything of how she factors into Avengers four, other than she's stronger as Captain Marvel, and we got our first look on the internet after it was restored. It did it did break for a minute or two, and then no, we had to restore it, it and come. It didn't. <laughs> uh, we were hoping for a trailer on Tuesday. This came out late Monday, really, and uh, they uh, EW has given us. Uh, a plethora of images to look at in their upcoming uh, yeah. thing, especially the, the iconic cover. I think the cover is probably going to be the image everyone sees out of this, Mike. Uh, we get to see uh, Brie Larson in her red, blue, and gold outfit. Um, she does not have the sash, though, um, that we saw on uh, one of the Black Order's people, but I do got to say I like the colors. I mean, this is the first red, blue, and gold suit we've seen, right? We'd only seen the green and gold, like, gray one before. Yeah, we've seen it like on some random promotional materials that may be slapped onto like a movie theater souvenir cup. 
We saw it in concept art. But uh, Chris, I do have to ask you, uh-huh. why? Why is it we thought that there was going to be a trailer? I mean, could there possibly have been a major celebrity out there on Twitter claiming that what was coming? just a day from that tweet would literally break the internet. All right. I got to complain a little bit. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't see this tweet until like 24 hours after everyone was already mad at it. I'm like, I don't know what's happening here. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta complain a little bit here. I'll, I'll complain both ways. Okay. Um, so it'll be in the favor of the movie and uh, slightly against the movie. I still think this movie is going to be good. I'm just annoyed by the marketing. Uh, Brie Larson, like 24 hours before all this stuff came out, went on her Twitter account and added uh, EW, Entertainment Weekly, and said, Hey, EW, are you, uh, I'm bored. How about we break the internet tomorrow or something like that? So I am already have a huge pet peeve with the term break the internet because like everybody thinks that uh, what they're marketing is going to do that. And I don't even think a trailer would necessarily do that for Captain Marvel. Maybe an early trailer for Infinity War Part 2 uh, so ahead of time in front of all these movies might be able to do that. But, you know, this is just a, this is just another Marvel movie that we're waiting for. I'm very excited for a trailer, but I don't think it's going to be breaking anything. So, and then uh, the next day comes along, and we even have a time. What what did they say, like 9 a.m.? It, it, it was noon my time, yeah. Nine yeah. My, uh, n- so, noon my nine years. Yeah. So I am patiently waiting in front of my computer, hitting refresh right at 9, and what do I see? What do I see, Chris? Just a magazine cover. Yeah, it's a cool magazine cover, but this ain't breaking the internet. No photos breaking the internet. Uh, maybe that Kim Kardashian photo where her like butt was catch- catching champagne because I think that did break the CDN server. But that's just like one server, and like Kim Kardashian is on a different well, celebrity level that I necessarily don't agree with. The, but the, that, fra- that's the what's phrase came me. from a photo, though. That I mean, I think that's the 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 comparison. This is, is a personal complaint for Mike. This is this is this is all. This, this is a is. real complaint. People are overusing that phrase. If everything breaks the internet, nothing breaks the internet. I, if everybody's a superhero, nobody's a superhero. Chris, I, I didn't read break the internet. I just wanted to see. I, I, we were all hoping for a trailer. We didn't, and we'll talk about when that's going to come here in just a second. But let's okay. go through these photos. Right. First and foremost, the cover is the first red and bl- red white red gold and blue suit. Looks really cool. Um, here's one that we get to see. I, we, I believe this is on, on Earth, Mike, in her, her suit. This is an onset photo of her in her suit. Do you think that's on Earth? Or, I mean, yeah, I, I guess it's, I mean, it looks like Earth. I'm sure the production shot this on Earth. I don't I think they did. they did. They went right to space. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, you don't really know exactly where she's going to go because there are other photos in this photo set where she's obviously not around human beings. Not so uh, but she might, may, maybe this is the third act. She comes back to Earth. A very a very important set of photos are on Earth later, and we'll talk about those. Uh, another photo shows her with uh, my favorite, a Nine Inch Nails logo on in her black leather jacket and a shield hat. So how did Captain Marvel get involved with Shield in this? So well, she um, wa- obviously wanted to set up a lot of uh, comfortable and easy cosplay for all yeah. of us next year at Comic Con. <laughs> love love boxes jeans, in here. jeans, leather jacket, t-shirt, and a hat. You, you know, you might already have half of that stuff. That's, that's, that's typical Marvel undercover here. Like she, <laughs> she thinks she's undercover. She's not. Yeah. Um, below that, we actually get to see our first uh, look at uh, Maria. Rambo called Photon. Uh, she eventually has a daughter called Monica Rambo, who was also a Captain Marvel at one point. So uh-huh. I, I don't think they'll play that in here. But it looks like you know when with uh, Carol Danvers' history in the Air Force, it looks like they're going to lead into Ooh. that a little bit as well. This is this is probably her goose. I mean, whenever whenever you kind of see one of these like one off human characters getting a first look photo, yeah, they're probably going to die. This is where we're gonna get like some uh, anguish and some heartbreaks. So. Especially if we not if we don't know the name in the comic book, as well. like we know <laughs> yeah. our daughter's name and not hers. Yeah, we might not be seeing you around. <laughs> yep, we get a, our first look at. Uh, I think this is probably one of the cooler photos. A yeah. Star Force here. There's um, a lot to go off of here. Yes. So working left to right, we have uh, Jude Law's Captain Marvel. Presumably, we get a return of Ronan the Accuser, played by Lee Pace. Uh, we and then. In the group here, farthest left, we see Korath, the uh, from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One, without his cybernetic implants. Yeah, he the famous like, guy who said, "Who?" Yeah, Star Lord. <laughs> He's got. Uh, looks like maybe some swords on his back there. Mm-hmm. Um, we think the blue person with the the fro there, that's Captain Atlas uh, from the comic books. The guy with the beard is probably someone called Ultimus. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, we get uh, Brie Larson in the green and black suit, and then lastly, uh, Min Erva, uh, who was 
famously Captain Marvel's one of her villains in the comic books over on the far right as well. Yeah, there's a whole lot you can analyze here because they look they look to be in a giant hangar, and I would assume this is either on a, an alien planet or in space. Yeah. Uh, Ronan being back, I mean, we knew Ronan and um, Korath w- were going to be in this movie, but I wasn't sure if it was just going to be like a cameo or what the deal is, but it looks like all of these people are in some sort of maybe like flight academy. You know, it looks like Captain Marvel is throwing some shade there to uh, to Ronan, so mm-hmm. I don't know exactly when he starts accusing. I don't know if he's not quite the accuser in this, so um, I just hope that they have like a real true place in this story. You know, I do like the idea that like, oh, well, we're seeing characters that we've seen in other galactic movies, so we're kind of stringing this universe together, but I hope they kind of don't run into the same problem Star Wars has had before, where... Uh, the Star Wars is in space, and it's a giant galaxy with hundreds of planets, but we only ever see the same couple people. It's like, isn't this galaxy supposed to be bigger with maybe, like, billions of people, and we keep seeing the same, like, Skywalkers? So, yeah. um, as long as long as this makes sense to the script, uh, I'll, I'll be okay with it. Well, what I think here is, is what we can take. They're part of the, the Kree Space Force here, or whatever they are. And uh, it looks like maybe at one point they were good guys before they got their cybernetic implants and, and Ronan... Uh, painted his face black because in our next image, um, I, I believe we have now that's Jude Law and uh, Captain Marvel here. He's got glowy eyes. You notice that Jude Law's his eyes are yeah, they're not normal. Yellow there, they're yellow. Yeah, yeah so they they've got he's got some colored eyes. Uh, Captain Marvel, uh, Jude Law, and Ronan here on set with one of the directors. Ronan doesn't have the black face yet. He's not painted his face uh, black with the blood of his enemies or whatever he did in the first movie. <laughs> so it hasn't quite been radicalized yet. Yeah, he's still very much green rather than black. He hasn't gone again on that. Uh, he said, what, what did he say? That he was some sort of terrorist in the first Guardians movie? Like even the, the Nova Corps was like, he's, he's a terrorist. He's like, he's part of your problems. And the Kree were like, no, he's not our problem. He's your problem. Um, Jude Law, he's got a gun and a holster over here as well. So they use guns in space somehow um I, I don't know i don't know how it's gonna play out but i'm pretty sure they're probably gonna butt a little bit of heads here between these two guys and that's gonna probably make a ronin run off and and do his own little yeah, weird may, thing yeah maybe this will be a way to kind of appease some of the um some of the negative uh criti- criticisms that was around for the first guardians movie because in the first guardians everybody loved guardians but everyone's like well ronin's just kind of almost like a cut and paste bad guy he just kind yeah. of wants to he just wants to swing his hammer and like uh, uh, defeat defeat the people who don't like. So maybe this is a way to kind of like back him into a little bit more of an eloquent storyline. Uh, so that might be kind of clever. We thought that that might happen with maybe uh, Batman and Superman and the Justice League, but yeah, yeah, none of that happened. <laughs> no, none of that happened. Uh, we get our first look at Desk Jockey Nick Fury here, looking Whoa, young, looking fly. This is this is the craziest photo that people are not talking about enough. This man has been de-aged before her very eyes with the computers. Uh, very, very little, I would believe. I mean, we saw the set photos of him young on set with the dots. So uh, they've they've done a little bit, but I think he still just looks that way. I just think he looks that way. He's always looked that way for about 30 <laughs> years now. Um, but, I mean, I, I'm excited to see, see him. He's got both eyes. He's not wearing the eye patch. I think we're going to learn about how we got the eye patch, Mike. It's mm-hmm. going to be very important. Because I think some, some, some space creatures called the scrolls in our next photo are going to give him that. And we get our first look at the MCU scrolls. Yeah, this and is this is big, buddy. This is way better than Fox could have ever given us <laughs> anything scroll related. They've got the green skin, the pointy ears, the 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 ball sack looking chins that, that Star Wars would say. <laughs> so uh, so here here we go. I, I said I was going to push back and defend the movie slightly. Um, whenever we get kind of a new character revealed, whether it's like Venom. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, however you want to do it, there's always some, some smart ass out there with Photoshop who tries to fix it. You know, like, oh, they did it wrong. They didn't do it quite right. Let me go in and tweak the colors and try to make it look closer to the comic book. So I did come across the photo where somebody tweaked the purple on their forehead to make it look brighter and they kind of altered the colors a little bit. They did literally nothing else. They didn't reshape the people or give them different fabric. They just kind of changed the colors. 
and they put it side by side with the original and it was something along the lines of oh which one do you like better and people were sounding off in the comments and I was just like what are you doing have you ever ever looked at any Marvel concept art at all you can follow like all of these Marvel official concept artists on Instagram and on social media and like after their movie has been out for like a couple years they'll show you the old art of yeah. ideas that they've explored and trust me any sort of like smart ass idea that you think the scroll should look like they've already drawn that a million different ways i'm sure that you're going to be able to get the captain marvel art book and you're going to see a million different variations of what the scrawls were going to look like so don't just think that they went for their first idea but like i think these scrawls like look awesome so i don't know if there's a big point of contention out there about how they look if it is it's I, dumb but i I've think not, they look sick yeah i've not heard any negative looks about them um the 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 one in the front and foremost here he's talos uh, he's played by I forget his name. He was the um, General Krennic in or in uh, Rogue One, the bad guy mm -hmm. in Rogue One uh, with the gray hair. We see him in the next photo. The next photo is, is Talos in his human form uh, there. Uh, he's the bad guy in Ready Player One as well. He's always a bad guy. He's got the bad <laughs> guy look. Um, but apparently he's going to be infiltrating S.H.I.E.L.D. with this his human look. Mm. So that's uh, he looks like a businessman. Uh, there in, in in Talos, I I like the scrolls. I I didn't think I I didn't think we'd actually get something so, I guess different, so textured. I I don't know. It's just I didn't expect something yeah. like that for for yeah, a new I'm, I'm curious if this is like a jumping off point of something uh, presumably very big. I mean, the secret war, uh, not secret wars, a uh, secret invasion. You know, is a pretty uh, big storyline in the Marvel comic books. And it's something that I think eventually they might get around to because they've kind of been running through a lot of the big events, you know, Age of Ultron, uh, Civil War. So this could be an event that they might try to bring to the MCU. So who knows? We could be seeing this these aliens for like the next 10 years. This could be like the next two phases of Marvel and we might not even know about it. I, I imagine one of two endings is going to happen. It's Nick Fury uh, finds someone high up who died and then their body shifted into a scroll so the movie's gonna end with him with the body of a scroll on his hands mm -hmm. or we're gonna see someone that we know has been established in the mcu as a good person be a scroll turn into that person and then we're gonna <sighs> have to rethink our whole world with them yeah, as a scroll that would be really crazy i don't know who it would be i don't know if they would go as as large as maybe like Tony Stark Captain or Captain America, America because oh. just too much of the MCU is integrated into their stories and it would be so weird going back and watching their movies and being like, wait, this is a scroll the whole time I'm watching this? I think more likely it could maybe be somebody like Hawkeye. Maybe Hawkeye has been like a scroll well, the whole time or something like that, you know? The problem, the problem is, I mean, since this is set in the 90s, I mean, none of those people were around. Uh, really for us to know. So, well, who knows? You, you, we never really know when they could have possibly assumed or yeah. started this tactic. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just think that's the way it's going to end with one of the one of, a scroll body somewhere. Someone's going to be a scroll that we didn't think was a scroll. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, I, I've got to say, I, I, I like these photos. There's, there's a lot to unpack in some of these. Um, makes me may have questions. Uh, they did confirm that Captain Marvel has powers when the movie starts a lot like kind of black panther and spider-man kind of done so we don't see her like get her powers or something like that so it may be changed a little bit um but the trailer is the big question mike we, yes we, we always want to give me this trailer because i need it um i i'm thinking uh, so every every time something comes out the photos of, of a superhero movie unveil on ew the trailer is two weeks away from that cover oh okay uh, so I think by not next episode, but two episodes away, we'll be talking about the Captain Marvel trailer, possibly the Avengers four title and a oh. couple other announced Marvel movies. We are in that September window where they've got to announce some stuff. So I hope so. They got a lot going on, man. A lot that we don't know about and want to know about Mike. Mm. Mm. Take a drink here before I uh, just tell you Iron Fist season two is on Netflix if you want to watch it. So uh, <laughs> is this where the spec take happens? <laughs> yeah. What Iron Fist? I, I totally forgot this even came out. <laughs> Spider Man really kind of took over. My, took over. I mean, between Captain Marvel news, Spider Man the game, did it, that was just on the back burner. But yeah. the end of it, the very end of Iron Fist season two, did include a season three trailer for Daredevil out of nowhere. Um, oh. And we get this little, there's a, I think an image on Twitter, but I think this video is probably more important where he says pretty much along the lines, he's like, I would rather 
die daredevil than continue living as matt murdoch or yeah something like i that. think he says like die as the devil yeah so it's just a little thing where he's in like a confessional booth it looks like he's beat up and bloodied so i don't know if this he's, is he's in the yeah. black suit as yeah. well just to point that out like yeah, that's his seems, original black suit yeah it seems like he's back on his feet he's been nursed back to health so who knows what episode this possibly could be from for the next season but i i, I am gonna do my best to watch the next season of iron fist you know obviously we all know how i feel about that first season so, you know, I at least want to see what they did. You know, uh, obviously they only have to go up. They can only possibly get yeah. better. So, you know, I at least want to get through the first three. I'd like to at least deliver my initial opinions out there for the audience. But, I mean, come on. When the, the, I was telling Chris off the mic before we started recording, uh, this could be theoretically if Iron Fist Season 2 is bad. I'm, I'm not hoping it is, but if it was, I mean, you could have the, on the exact same day – one of the best Marvel properties is released next to literally one of the worst of Iron Fist, you know, next to Spider-Man, uh, the video game. So, I mean, if, if a Marvel fan has to make a choice, it's going to be the Spider-Man game. Yeah. I guess if you don't have a PlayStation, I guess if you have an it's, Xbox. Iron, Iron Fist <laughs> is, is the cheaper option of, of the yeah. two. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. But I, I mean, so, I mean, I've heard, I've heard uh, Iron Fist season two is better. I've read some things that are pretty spoilery that make me want to watch this. So uh -huh. I think I may get around to it as well. Since it's only 10 episodes, I'm not committing. Like It feels better oh, yeah, to commit that, to 10 than right. 13. I totally, I totally forgot about the episode order too. Yeah. So it, it feels, makes me feel better committing to 10 than 13. And then we're going to have to see if, daredevils 10 or 13 as well going forward yeah. um some some uh i guess not box office but some fun stats here for star wars the last jedi uh i noticed it is the best-selling blu-ray of 2018 so far oh uh, weird okay it is outsold black panther uh thor ragnarok coco and the greatest showman as all movies that have released this year yeah so uh, I, I'm not I'm not saying that this that this couldn't possibly be impressive, but I'm always a little wary when I see stats for physical media, just because it, I'm I'm not super familiar with like the the music selling and publishing world, but a lot of the best selling CDs out there on the market for music are like these really kind of older kind of classic rock bands who may have kind of gotten the band back together to make a new album because the only people kind of buying the older kind of physical media are older people going out and buying it. So I, I don't know if maybe that has something to do with the fact that it's Blu-ray and it's physical. Uh, so I'm not saying it's not impressive, but who knows? There could be something... There could be something playing around there, but it was one of the biggest movies that it, when the year it came out. So I guess it's not too surprising. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm actually gonna have to go. I was. I, this is one of those things I clicked on because I, I wanted to do that actually because it said Black Panther and Thor, and I was like, what's what's going on here? Like, uh -huh. um, I was gonna I was gonna try to see if I could find out where exactly I pulled that from earlier, but uh, to see if it wasn't blue. I just wrote Blu-ray. It may not be Blu-ray. It may be digital as well. I just did not. Uh, I just didn't look as hard because I was like, oh, that's really interesting i mean it's not really interesting star wars is huge right like but i, I thought black panther uh would would maybe beat it out possibly even uh um, <laughs> well chris i think you need Thor. to rephrase that statement I, I believe you said star wars was huge but i think you need to say the last jedi was huge because you may have already forgotten it but we did have a star wars movie that came out this year that was not huge <laughs> oh yeah yeah no I, I mean i i did because i think i that's one of our next topics here I'm, i i found i found the article i pulled this from here um, the Blu-ray this year, th over 3 million Blu-rays for, uh, The Last Jedi and, uh, 2.6 for Black Panther. So, and these are Blu-rays. So I don't know. There you go. Stats. Stats. Stats facts. Math. Facts. But we got our first image from Solo showing, uh, the real life full version of Darth Maul they used for that scene at the end there. Yeah. Do uh, we, uh, do we know where maybe this came from? Did this come from like the this art is book? Film. Or did it you just? They just tweeted it out or something? Uh, I think on their <laughs> website they had two of them. There's this one, and then there's one where he's in more of like a, his standard attack pose or whatever. Uh, okay. Um, I was just kind of looking. He's got his metal legs here that you can see, um, and he's got that blade, the guard over the top of his blade. I think he put that there after losing to Obi Wan. Um, yeah, I, think I that's mean, how he beat him. Uh, that's it. The cat's out of the bag. <laughs> you know, it, it was uh, kind of tacked on towards the end of the solo movie, but I guess, you know, if you haven't gotten around to seeing the movie yet, uh, Darth Maul is briefly cameoed in it. So I wonder if this is an attempt to say, hey, 
Darth Maul is kind of coming back into the Star Wars universe, or if this is just like, hey, if you kind of wanted to see him outside of a hologram, here you go, let's test the water, see if people are excited for Darth Maul or not. But I thought it was pretty funny. I saw a tweet out there um, in the world that said, like, uh, when did Darth Maul decide that after he got robotic spider legs, it was a better idea to go to human Sp uh, robot legs. Wouldn't you just stick with the spider legs? Wouldn't those just be more fun, more combat ready? Because I uh, guess uh, didn't he have the spider le legs in like with the Clone Wars cartoon yeah, show? Yeah, but in the Clone Wars, it shows him get his regular legs as well. Man, he they, they stuck with the spider legs. They're they, cooler. They, yeah, but they didn't work. They didn't work as well as you think. Like they, they they are not that good for battle. Like you have more legs to worry about. I, yeah, I, but I he can't know. he can't feel them. And, but, but he also <laughs> trained as a two like a two footed person like. I mean, I, I I get it. It sounds cool, but it, but it didn't it didn't it wasn't cool. It didn't work. <laughs> um, but they did put the Darth Maul clip online. It is officially out there now for for Han Solo, and it's probably because a lot of people didn't watch it in theaters to re yeah. to hey, you didn't watch this in theaters, but look what you're missing out. On. Yeah, they're probably like, guess what, losers? You could have saw Darth Maul on a hologram. Yeah, but I mean, I like Darth Maul, and I don't think we'll see more of him because that did so bad that they'll probably any Han Solo spinoff or sequel that now it's canned so uh, <laughs> that was it that was the one you got and y'all missed it so there you go in terms of other release screenshots we get a look from Aquaman here a couple weeks ago we saw uh, Aquaman and Mera at a like a little thing it looked like the it looked like the middle of the gear thing in Age of Ultron that they have in the middle of the city to knock it down uh -huh. apparently it's a hologram display thing and here we're gonna see King Atlan uh, here a hologram of him doing Man, something. Man, every did you did, did you organize our show notes to have back to back a uh, hologram news? I, I did. From, I did uh, screenshots uh, because when I edit these videos together, I don't want to have to add transitions in every time. <laughs> so yeah, there was a little bit of of uh, thought to it, but I don't a know who hologram playing, uh, news corner over here. Yeah, I don't know who plays King Atlan, but uh, he he's a blue blue little uh, thing. You here. uh yeah. Speaking of holograms, you you saw the new Mission Impossible movie, right? I did. Yeah. I, I didn't get a chance to see it, but I heard somebody saying they appreciated how they kind of simplified kind of the, the tech in the movies. Because in the past, you know, they've always had these like kind of teched out, uh, you know, geeked out agents and tools for them to use. But I, I guess in the newer movie, they're a little bit more straightforward and they're dealing with like, you know, just paper and like simple computer consoles and stuff like that. So maybe maybe this is a trend where you're just like, hey, everything doesn't have to be a hologram. OK, people. I mean, I wouldn't. I don't know if Mission Impossible really applies to that, but I mean, I think you know when you go rogue in every movie, you don't have access to all the <laughs> all the technology you need. Um, I also think this this is uh, it's probably just me, but looking at this photo, if you look at the Aquaman's leg, there's a little bitty like Roman statue looking dude, and I'm like, uh -huh. why is he so small? Like, why is that <laughs> that statue so small in this thing? Yeah, it's just it's just pin particles, man. Yeah, that's man. always the answer, no matter what universe you're in. I'm like, why why did they make them so small? That's just weird. But I mean, I don't know. We'll see this come uh, come December. Uh, we also got Shazam gave us another a, a screenshot as well. They're giving out DC screenshots instead of video this week. Uh, <laughs> we get to see uh, Mark Strong as Doctor Savannah, uh, uh -huh. who is the villain here. I believe he had, looks like he has some sort of staff in his hand here with the, the sticks and his hands glowing and his eyes yeah. glowing. I actually heard uh, something else about Shazam this week where um, apparently whatever effect or design or lighting that they're going to do with the bolt on the chest of his costume has not been finalized yet. So if, you, if you're kind of taking a look at, at, at him in his trailer and in the screenshots, what we see on screen might end up being like a little bit different. So there's something to look forward to in a, a possible future Shazam movie, so, so they're uh, gonna, movie trailer. They're going to take out that whole scene where he touches the suit and it specifically does that one look on it. <laughs> hey, who but, knows? <laughs> yes. I, don't know, that's, I mean, that's weird, but that's whatever. We've got till April on that, and a lot of people are probably... I think more people are excited for Shazam than Aquaman. Um, so... Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to see how that plays. Uh, Swamp Thing, you you make my heart sing. Is that how that song goes? I don't I don't think so. <laughs> oh, Chris. Uh, oh, you can uh, tell it's getting towards the end of the show now. <laughs> we are, we are. Uh, the Swamp Thing on the DC Universe. Yeah, the I believe one of the writers has gone on record to say that it will feature a physical creature suit for Swamp Thing, Whoa. not a CGI test like the movie would have done. Yeah, that's really interesting because that's the most recent kind of up-to-date screen swamp thing we've seen was that, that that CG test that we saw for the possible, like, Guillermo del Toro Dark Universe um, 
you know, thing. So, yeah, if it's going to be a physical suit, that could end up being really cool. I could kind of see, you know, mixing in some appropriate lighting with maybe some puppetry and, like, some stilts. You could kind of get something really cool going there with, like, a Swamp Thing costume, which could have, like, a really neat effect. And, you know, you could always pepper in a little CG on top of, you know, the physical suit to really make it sing. I mean, that's what Guillermo did with uh, the fish creature and... Um, that movie he won the Oscar for, uh, Shape of Water. So obviously, I'm only saying Guillermo del Toro just because he was attached to something previously with DC. But who knows? They could still kind of uh, uh, get inspired with that. You know, this is kind of a dark creature that it looks like might be uh, pretty mature. They'll just turn the lights off a little bit to hide all the imperfections. Like we're just gonna darken <laughs> this a little bit. Uh, he also said they're going for a hard R rating on this. Yes. They, they are specifically shooting for that. <laughs> is Swamp Thing gonna say like "fuck Robin" in this? I, he might. It's uh, just gonna be a, just a chain of swearing through the shows. I Fuck think it's Robot more of like, Man. Fuck like, Batman. I think it's more of the gross like dismemberment and like all the gross things like Swamp Thing does to people who are like polluting the green or whatever it is he does uh-huh. uh he's not the toxic avenger but i mean it can be something gross like uh-huh. that we we do our best to keep the the podcast pg-13 but even i think in pg-13 movies they're allowed to say the f word at least like once so i used it twice so sorry out there don't say the f word kids yeah yeah do it do what he says not as he does yeah you uh, you gotta you gotta earn the right to use that word you gotta yeah. like you gotta you gotta have some life experience before you can start swearing at, right. the, at the world. Once you, you start paying face. taxes, you can say that word. <laughs> yes, that, that means you gotta get a job. Get a job first. Get your first paycheck. Realize why you're not getting all the money back that you made. Then you can start swearing. That's exactly. <laughs> We've set the rules right here for life. Yeah. Um, we've also cast two actresses. I don't know these people. Crystal Reed as Abigail Arcane. Apparently, she was in Gotham. Uh, and then uh, actress uh, Maria Stein as Liz Tremaine, who is a journalist in this. So yeah. looks like they're focusing more on the female leads rather than the male lead, who is going to probably just be a bunch of people in a suit for Swamp Thing. Yep. Uh, lastly, Mattel uh, has... I don't know what the hell they're thinking here. They have opened a film department for their for their. Oh, products. here we go. Here we go, Mattel. What are we doing? What kind of universe are we so creating? The franchises <laughs> that they own include Barbie, okay. He-Man, and Masters of the Universe, which I already thought they were doing a movie like that, but not yeah. in Mattel. Hot Wheels and Max Steel, and I believe Max Steel just had a movie which bombed like two years ago. So, <sighs> yeah. What are the, this is not obviously. The only way I'm going to be interested in all these movies, if they were all in a franchise together, which is ridiculous, let's put Barbie in a Hot Wheel, uh, and then she picks up, like, He-Man, and then they go out on adventures. I don't know, man. This is weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think they're going to franchise it together yet, hopefully, um, but but we never know. Um, I, I just... Uh, why? Why? Well, no, I mean, money, yeah, Chris. We, money. That's why we know Hasbro wants their connected universe with Transformers and GI Joe, but all those things are stupid enough to to blend together. <laughs> no one will care. They just want explosions. But I don't see He Man and his Masters of the Universe getting in their custom Hot Wheels <laughs> to go pick up Barbie and take on. I mean, I, I don't know. Ho- I would say Hot Wheels is almost the easiest thing to get off the ground just because, you know, just kind of take like a Fast and the Furious angle with it a little bit. You know, obviously uh, uh, cars on screen will translate to dollars if you treat it corny enough. Uh, Barbie, I don't really know how you – you're going to have to have a really talented – a writing team or writer to kind of turn that into a movie because well, it could literally be anything. A Barbie well, is just a figure of a woman, so it's like uh, you, I don't know how you make a movie out of that. <laughs> well, I think I think you're considering live action films. They I think they can make Barbie animated movies all day long if they wanted to. Oh, do Oh well, yeah, for sure. But, uh, but if we're know, talking what, live action, yeah, what? I mean, no. I mean, was that <laughs> was that movie in the eighties? Weird Science, where they made like a girl out of a computer program. I love that movie, Chris. Now, if you're pitching like a Weird Science Barbie crossover, I might be okay with that. That's exactly what Barbie is made by men who like this is the perfect image of a woman. Yeah. She has I to think deal actually, with that and be brought to life. I'm trying to recall like the montage where they're slamming a bunch of parts into like their computer components and like getting it struck by lightning. I think a Barbie is thrown into the mix, so that very well might be like a back channel Barbie movie that we don't even know. About. About. Is, is, is it was it weird science is that the one oh yeah weird science uh i love it it's great i, I, I mean i'm just gonna click on it here and see if they say barbie and i'm gonna do a quick search barbie well i not don't found. think that's the character's not name they they, na- they name the the well, the creature that they create the woman is, I Le- is lisa but i mean I, I i thought it was like they say they made lisa out of xxxx oh of gotcha sugar uh, spice everything nice yep and a barbie 
and a, <laughs> and a low cut shirt that all of us boys remember. Yep, and 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 many faces from Masters of the Universe. They just throw him in there. No, uh, but yeah. So Mattel probably see some of these things. Maybe get made in the movies. Probably not. Uh, just we're just gonna put. It on. I, I imagine they might just do animated movies, and we're we're reading this all wrong. So maybe no, we're not watching them. Uh, that's it, Mike. It's time for more Spider-Man. And oh yeah, let's go play that game. It's man. probably so. dinner time here, actually. So I need to go do that <laughs> and then uh, play some Spider-Man. Mike, if people want to find you, see what you're up to, maybe some of your Spider-Man screenshots you're taking, where can they do that at? Well, they can find me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram and Twitter, and you can read my web comics at Pickled Comics. Dot com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, see if you're out there twitching, see if you're out there tweeting about your twitching on the Twitters, uh, where can they find you? Yeah, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Valdan, V-A-L-D-A-N. Head over to Instagram, Valdan87. Uh, you can also uh, find me on Twitch, I believe it's Valdan87 as well. So um, I, I've been sharing it to our, our page as well, so whenever I do that, you can probably check it out there. Um, all those old things I, I did play yesterday and today are saved, so you can go back and revisit those. I don't have any audio on, um, so maybe if I go to, and do a hard mode, I might turn on chat so we can we can all talk about it. So, um, yeah, that's really about it. Mike, uh, if people want to learn more about Superhero Slate, all the other episodes we have, where can they find those at? Well, as always, please visit SuperheroSlate.com. That is the best place to find all the avenues we host our little show and to get our awesome show notes. So we talked about a ton of screenshots for Captain Marvel, so if you want links to those, you can get that in our show notes. And we also mm-hmm. talked about the Daredevil kind of Season 3 teaser. Yep. I actually tried to find that myself, like, yesterday online, just, like, doing, like, normal searches through YouTube, and I couldn't even find it anywhere there. So you can find that in our show notes. And also, Chris mentioned our upcoming releases pages on SuperheroSlate.com. So if you're curious when all these superhero movies are coming out and you don't want to like scroll through like dumb slideshows on other people's websites we we have like a nice just organized list uh it's a text list we're not even loading images so you can get that information right away at superhero slate.com and, and you can find us on apple Podcasts, youtube google Podcasts, soundcloud tune and stitcher iheart radio subscribe to us before the next season of serial comes out because that's like the world's like most amazing like crime podcast <laughs> and uh uh, we want to make sure that we're in your feed before Serial takes over the world again with Season 3. Um, so you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and you can get merch of Superhero Slate at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. If you're a fan of the show, we love hearing from you. We tell you every week that you can reach out on YouTube, on Twitter. We love reading your comments. You can send us emails. Uh, you can also chat and yell at Chris in Twitch chats now. We got a new whole new channel for you to express your anger through Twitch. So uh, you That's can right. do that there. And, uh, you know, if you're a super fan of the show, uh, we love our super fans out there, uh, each and every one of you. If you want to be in that exclusive club, uh, that maybe one day we'll turn it into like a fancy dinner party club. It'll be like Club 33 at like Disneyland. Do they have Club 33 at Disney World? Do they have like that special uh, club down there? Uh, I, I don't know. No. I don't well, know. Well, anyway, if you want well, to be part of this. How about this? We, uh, we will look into getting official Superhero Slate membership cards that we that you can subscribe to and get uh, in the mail. So you can be a <laughs> card-carrying listener of Superhero Slate. Yeah, I should just start making these like grand platitude statements of like, if we get a thousand super fans, we're going to open up our own super fan restaurant. And you have to have a special card to get in. We're yeah. only going to sell hot dogs without the buns because it's that's all we're going to be able to afford. Look, I, I've got to say, uh, the, the guy I was with yesterday, Troy, uh, they used to do um, matinee nights Sunday at their house for movies, and they had a hot dog roller in their house. Oh, to, man, to I movies. want that. And I'm like, man, that sounds brilliant. I, yeah, I so, really like that idea. <laughs> so if you want to be a super fan, all you got to do is share the show with a friend or a buddy or have a hot dog roller, and that automatically makes you a super fan. Yeah, that's right. You're in. <laughs> you don't have to. Nothing else. Just send us a picture. Yeah. You're, you with your hot dog roller, and, you, and you're in. And we will be here every week, so make sure you're subscribed. I'm sure we're going to be talking more about Spider-Man next week, too. Yeah, I, I think I think I would like to, if me and Mike can find a, a, some time to sit down and just do a review over the game. Uh, people, if you want to share your screenshots, Superfan Jim suggested this on my Twitch. If you want to share your screenshots from in-game to our feed, please do so. Oh, that'd be sweet. We'll um, retweet that. Yeah, I didn't know how to take this. I was setting up all these things and just pressing X, and I'm like, oh, I didn't hit the share button. So <laughs> I'm I too busy trying to figure out how to dodge me and punch by those big thugs. I don't, I can't. Oh yeah, the, the men's big thugs will just railroad you, dude. They, yeah, they do not let you up. So, uh, yep. All right. Well, we're gonna go play that game now. We'll talk to you later. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. Roughing it. We're roughing it out here. Let's just go at 4:30. Let's just do this.